Hello, good evening. My name is Bimbo. Now, if you are in that category of um, international applicants that are looking for scholarship opportunity abroad, I mean, you don't have a father, you don't have a mother, you don't have a, an uncle or auntie to fund you, to put money in your account, to relocate as a student to any country of your choice or to relocate as a student to abroad. You are, I mean, there are many people in that category. Trust me, I know this because I receive that chat daily. They are looking for scholarship opportunity. If you are in that category, I have a good news for you. Now, there is a school that offers tuition fee waiver for all international applicants. Yes, not only tuition fee waiver, they also provide meal allowance, housing allowance, student allowance, accommodation allowance. I mean, even flight reimbursement, meaning the flight that you take from your country, the money you spend on flights to, from your country to their country, they reimburse you after a month in their country. Wow. When I saw this opportunity, I was, I was, I was living, I was, I was jumping for joy because this is a great deal. And the beauty of it again is this. BSc, MSc, and PhD. So it covers all programs, all courses. And another joy of it is this. All their programs are taught in English. <laughs> all their programs are taught in English. So what excuse do you have? Nothing. Let me quickly say this. Now, you will remember that at the beginning of this year, I, I, I started singing it in almost all my video. I started saying it that get your document if you plan to jump by September or October, the fall academic year, which is the general academic year for most European schools. Get your document verified by at least the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Foreign Affairs in your country. The reason is because opportunity comes within a snap of a finger. So if you don't get this document verified when opportunities like this that i'm about to talk about that only require the doc i mean the, the stamp of um a, 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 a equivalent stamp of the egg of apostle which we all know that when you get the ministry of foreign affairs stamp on your document it is equivalent in abroad it is equivalent to the egg of apostle stamp on your document so which means your document is accepted as having the aid of apostle stamp in this school that i'm going to talk about shortly with you now like i said so i mean i've been, I've been saying it all this time so if you have not legalized or verify your document this is one of those times that you wish that you have already legalized it but the beauty of it is again is this Undergraduate programs and graduate programs, they have different admission deadline. So if you only under undergraduate programs, admission deadline is 15th of March. So which is why if you have not legalized your documents by now, you have about at least 16 days to legalize at Ministry of Education and Foreign Affairs to get that stamp on it, to be able to apply for this admission before 15th of March for undergraduate program. But undergraduate, uh, uh, graduate and, and uh, sorry, graduate program still have time up until March, uh, sorry, uh, up until April 15th. So, but, you know, another good thing is this. If you are in my Telegram group and you are in my, you know, uh, you are subscribers, you will, you will see that I've been saying it for a while that even if you need a sure assistance in any of this ministry, I mean, I, I have a sure plug such that within three to four days, your documents can be verified in those two places. You can even do it on Prozi. But of course, you know it is not free. The people in charge there, they will charge you if you want to do it in Prozi, such that you send it to them. So, yes, I will be showing you the application procedure to apply for this scholarship, to get the tuition waiver, to get the... I mean, the minute you are given admission, you are automatically considered for the tuition waiver because all programs in the school have opportunity for tuition waiver okay so and the the meal allowance accommodation allowance and housing allowance even pocket money pocket pocket allowance that is given to undergraduate programs and graduate programs is not the same thing so i will be showing you the application procedure 
the documents required to apply for graduate programs, undergraduate, uh, undergraduate programs, the step-by-step -step, uh, process that you have to follow to be able to apply what and what you need to do, the document required. Yes, I'll be showing that to you shortly. So you cannot afford to miss this. If you are just seeing my channel, this is Jackpot with your days. We provide opportunity to Portugal where we reside, to Austria and other beautiful European countries where we believe that you are going to have a beautiful relocation experience that will not cost you or make you to break the bank. And one of them is this opportunity that I'm about to announce or bring your way. You cannot afford to not watch this channel or to, to, watch, to not watch this video to the end. I will be giving you the step-by-step -step process, the application procedure, what you need to apply. Everybody can apply. BSc, MSc, PhD, everybody can apply to this admission, to this program in this school. So I will be showing you all that is required shortly. Stick to this channel. So click the subscribe button, like and subscribe to this channel so that by the time we bring opportunities like this your way, you will be the first person to get notification. Also, don't be greedy. Share this video to your loved ones. This is a timely, sensitive and important information. Tuition fee waiver and, and scholarship opportunity for all programs, BSc, MSc, so you cannot afford to only enjoy it alone. Share it with your loved ones, share it with a family member, it will really, really be a blessing. You will really, really be blessing somebody by sharing it. So come with me as I show you the school, the step-by-step -step process to apply, the document required to apply. Come with me. So this is the scholarship opportunity for undergraduate program. Yes, tuition fee fully waived, student allowance about 130,000 won monthly. Meal allowance two hundred and seventy thousand one monthly, international student international allowance one hundred and thirty thousand one monthly, seventy settlement subsidy two hundred and thirty thousand one monthly, flight reimbursement which is only for one way flight, tuition fees and allowance are supported for eight semester for undergraduate program, which cover the entirety of the undergraduate program. So this is the benefit that all undergraduate admissions into this university will stand to benefit. Yes, we stand to benefit. Now, graduate programs are not left behind. Now, for graduate programs, so see here, tuition assistance, all students, all students get tuition assistance. Now, tuition fully supported to this amount, 3,607,001 3, per semester. So all students, all international students get tuition assistance, tuition fee waiver. Now, there, however, there's something called a one-time matriculation fee of 680,001. What this means is that it's more or less like an enrollment fee. The minute you are offered ad admission for you to be able to matriculate, you need to pay a 680,001 monthly. And another beauty of it is this. You can get this matriculation fee waiver. Um, I mean, you can get this matriculation fee waived for regardless for, of BSc program, MSc program, or PhD program. You can get this fee waived. As long as you sub you you submit the application for the uh, 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 for the waiver of the matriculation fee at the right time with your application, okay, within the progress of your application, as long as you submit the application on time, they will review it and let you know if you will be getting a matriculation fee waiver for your program. I will be showing you. I will get to that stage shortly and I will show you how you can get the document, what you need to put in the document to apply for the tuition fee waiver. I'm sorry, for the matriculation fee waiver once you are offered admission. Now, for monthly stipend for all international students, for all international students, so student allowance up to 140,001. This is, this is for a master's program. So for graduate programs, student allowance up to 140,001 per month, which is for master's, master's student. However, PhD students get 295,001 per month. That is for PhD students. So you will see that uh, 
PhD get more uh, stipend monthly compared to master student. I mean, that I mean probably because of the lengthy research activities that is expected from a PhD candidate. Also, meal allowance of hundred thousand one are given to both MSc student and PhD student monthly. Now, so and uh, international student allowance up to one hundred and twenty thousand one per month across MSc and PhD program. So. However, there's something called research assistantship. So if you are if you are opportune that the, the your research area, especially for graduate program, if your research area falls among one of the um, study program that the school already have grants for. So if you are studying your MSc or PhD and it aligns with one of the areas in which the study already have grant for, you can have additional six thousand have a six million four hundred thousand one per year for MSc program and thirteen thousand seven hundred and forty thousand one per year for PhD program. That's an additional support for if your research align with one of the project or one of the areas in which the school already have grant and funds from the international community for. So I've seen support for all students. All students get housing support also for graduate students. The waiting time may take longer than expected. The housing fees will be increased every year. Utility, utility fees are charged separately. So all students get housing support and this support covers all the fees that is expected to pay for the accommodations that you as a student will be living in, in this school. And which school am I, am I talking about? That is Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology. Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology in Republic of Korea. Yes, in Republic of Korea. That is the name of the school that I've been talking about. So let's look at the application procedure, the admission procedure. Now, let's start with undergraduate um, applicants. So for undergraduate applicants, don't forget that I said that your admission end by March 15th, which means uh, you have about 16 to 15 days to get your document intact to apply for this admission. And this is the mandatory document that is required from you. You submit an online application form, uh, one recommendation letter. What does a rec What is a recommendation? A recommendation letter is a letter that you can get from for instance, um, um, a, a, a lecturer in your school, if as an undergraduate program, somebody, maybe um, a lesson teacher, somebody that have um, a, a, a registered institute for where you are taking your lesson or where you attend your WIAC lessons, GC lesson. So somebody that at least have a, a recognized institute, a registered institute that can provide a recommendation letter for you in a letter added paper of the organization. So a recommendation letter from anybody will suffice. Anybody can, it, it, it should not be your mother or your father. I will advise that it should not be because, I mean, it's, it's a general phenomenon that your mother or father will definitely want to recommend you. It is better that an outsider recommend you uh, or give you a letter of recommendation. So your high school profile your high school university transcript. So your high school, I mean, that's your WAHEC. That is, this is your WAHEC they're talking about. Yeah, high school diploma, uh, English profic proficiency test score report. Okay, <clears throat> everybody is, um, I mean, all everybody is required to write um, um, IELTS or provide, uh, um, uh, I mean, TOEFL or Duolingo or all those kind of, um, 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 what is it called? But for international applicant coming from an English speaking part of Africa, you you get an, an opportunity a, a waiver for this um for this admission okay so um then however the the waiver that your wahek will give you meaning the when you when you have about six six or b b two or thereabout in your English in your wahek or your O level you when you apply for this admission okay at the end of the day you might I mean. I, I mean, I will get there, I will show it to you. You might be required to, after six months, you might be required to taste and to take another um, test 
or take a Duolingo test, take a, take an English, um, uh, I, uh, any recognized English proficiency certificate by the Institute, I will show them to you shortly, any recognized English proficiency certificate by the Institute is, uh, is acceptable by all international applicants. But I, and I think this only covers for graduate program. For undergraduate program with your O level showing your proficiency in your English, I think everybody for undergraduate program gets a waiver for this admission. So um, your passport copy of applicant, that means your international part, passport data page, that is what this means, official document of parent-child relationship, statement of financial resources, that is the required document that you, so fine, you will be offered tuition fee waiver, but at least you should still be able to provide some sort of financial proficiency to be able to cater for your needs before the school start taking care of your accommodations, your feeding, pocket allowance, your tuition waiver and other things. So at least say about a thousand euro in your account or about 1.5 million for Nigerians should suffice for international applicants. So just put the money, there. it's not as if you will need this money to provide in this country. It's just for you to be able to uh, show that at least you have some sort of uh, financial backing or alternative financial options in your bank account. So, um, so that is that for the uh, international applicant. And another thing that I'm quickly going to talk about, and this is the school, generally, this is the school, School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, School of Mechanical Engineering, School of Life Science, Department of Chemistry, School of Integrated Technology, School of Energy Convergence, Artificial Intelligence Graduate School, Department of Biomedical Science and Engineering, Department of Physics and Quantum Science, School of Earth Science and Environmental Engineering, School of Material Science and Engineering. So if any of your specialty or if any of your area falls within this scope of study, research further to see which area of study would particularly align with your study, both for master's program and for PhD program. These are the different faculties and schools that are on programs that they offer in this school. And like I said, all their courses are taught in English. Now, eligibility. Who can apply for this admission? Candidates who are able to submit an apostille or consular verified or apostille or consular verified high school diploma by the registration deadline can apply for this admission. And like I said, if you are able to get uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stamp or Ministry of Education, like for instance, in Nigeria, you will have to get Ministry of Education stamp before Ministry of Foreign Affairs will attend to you. So that is for Nigeria, but I don't know the procedure for other countries. So if you are able to get the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stamp in your country, it is equivalent to the egg of a postal stamp. Or if you can go to the uh, to the Republic of Korean Embassy in, in, in Nigeria or in your country to get the to get the document legalized. I mean, especially for graduate programs, you still have enough time because the, the deadline for the applications is in April. So if if you feel that you can, you know, it will not be much of a burden to you, you can go to the embassy and you know and make a query about how you can stamp your document from their embassy to apply for this admission. But the shortest way that I feel it will be most it will be it will be convenient for everybody would be if you get the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stamp on your uh, uh, on your document before you apply for the admission. That is one. Applic applicant must have foreign citizenship and certify one of the following requirements. Neither of the applicant parents is a Korean citizen. For an applicant of Korean origin, he or she must have completed elementary, middle, and high school outside of Korea and have never been enrolled in any school in Korea. So applicants must meet both, both of the above requirements, the eligibility, the eligibility requirement of one and two. So which means this, this funding opportunity or this school is particularly designed for international applicants coming especially the English speaking part of Africa because English is the mode of language in this school or except if I mean um, people from Angola or, or or community of Portuguese speaking country if you speak English and you can prove 
you have some certification to prove that you speak English. Of course, you, you yourself can also lash into this opportunity. So that is for graduate, sorry, that is for undergraduate program. And of course, let's check the application procedure for undergraduate uh, undergraduate program once if you if you are you know if you are coming in new you have to sign up okay you have to sign up only if you are, if you have already registered that is when you can log in you have to sign up your details your application procedure to be able to submit all your document online and see in here online application and document submission it started from december 20th and it ends by february 15th that's why i said for undergraduate program you have at least 16 to 15 days to get all your documents in part and apply for this admission, okay? And uh, application evaluation and interview by between March and April, you will be uh, they will communicate to you if you will if you will uh, if you will uh, 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 conduct what is called um, a test or interview, they will get back to you by that time. Announcement of successful applicant between mid of May, registration mid of June and then the admission starts by late August or early September for all programs. Now, that's for undergraduate program. Let's quickly check, let's quickly check the admission procedure for graduate programs. Yes, now for graduate programs, <clears throat> they have two um, academic intake, semester entrance, okay? So uh, they have one for starting in March, okay? And they have one starting in September, for the one starting in March, you are expected to have applied. Uh, I mean, the application deadline is October 14, which means you are supposed to have applied by October 14 of 2023, which is last year. But the one that I will expect you to focus on will be the application that is ending by April 15, which the resumption time is um, September of 2024. So. September of 2024 for international applicant, this is the one that I expect that you will focus on. So which means you have up until April 15 to apply for this admission. Now, examination of your document, they will examine your document within 15 days, okay? And the document review, once you submit your document, they examine it within 15 days, then they will review the eligibility and the criteria if it meets the course that you're applying for within 30 days. Now, once after 30 days, Notification of admission result by June 16. They will get back to you by June 16, whether you have been admitted or not. Then registration of admitted student by end of June. All admitted students, at least you have about 15 days or thereabout to show interest once you have been offered admission. And this cover both, I mean, this cover all programs. Now, that is that for admission schedule. Now, let's quickly check the procedure. The procedure step number one submit the online application by uploading the required document following this link okay i will still show you the application procedure i mean the application portal for graduate program as well but you can of course follow this link so step, that is step number one upload every required document on this portal by following this link step number two the international admission coordinator will contact you when application and all required documents are confirmed and if they need any supporting document, they will also contact you via your registered email. Not notification of the admission results, a notification will be sent to, to the email address provided on or around June 15 for fall admission and November 30th for spring admission. Okay, now who, um, to those applicants whose documents have, have been received by this specified deadline, so admitted candidate are expected to respond to the offers within 15 days of notification. So which means if they offer you an admission, you have to respond to the acceptance of the admission within 15 days. Step four, completion of enrollment requires the reception of documents and paying the matriculation fee. So if you have decided to accept the offer of admission, you should enroll within the deadline provided. Upon enrollment, you will receive the admission packet to apply for the visa. Now, certificate of admission, certificate of financial sponsorship, certificate of admission, and certificate of financial sponsorship, and a letter of invitation will be provided. So, which means the minute you accept the admission, they will issue you certificate of admission, issue you certificate of financial sponsorship, which cover the tuition fee waiver, the uh, student allowance, the housing allowance, accommodation allowance, pocket allowance, everything will be written in the certificate of the financial sponsorship. All of these documents 
are the document that you will need to provide at the uh, relevant, I mean, at the, at, the, at, the, uh, at the Korean embassy in your country. Now, step number five, apply for a student visa. All international applicants will need to apply for visa to be able to enter Korea, the Republic of Korea. Now, that is, uh, that is that for the procedure. These are the required documents for graduate programs. Online application, like I said, you can follow this link. Now, certified degree or diploma transcript, meaning certified uh, BSc or MSc transcript, if you are applying for BSc, sorry, if you are applying for MSc, certified uh, degree transcript, if you are applying for a PhD, both BSc and MSc uh, certificate and transcript are needed. Two letters of recommendation, preferably let it be from uh, a le electoral that is in your school. A, yes, a lecturer that is in your school. Now, recommendation letter will be received directly. Do so, which means you need to inform the person that is recommending you. You have to send uh, the uh, you have to send a document to the person recommending you for this admission. Each of the two recommenders will receive an automated email instructing them how to proceed with their recommendation letter through an online process. So, which means as you are submitting your online application. There will, be, there will be a place where you will put the details of the person recommending you. And I will strongly suggest that you at least get uh, um, a lecturer either from your uh, university or I mean, for, uh, MSc or both, both MSc and PhD. Just get a lecturer to be the one recommending you, at least two lecturers to be the one recommending you. The, 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 the European universities and academic body usually value uh, uh, recommendation letter coming from uh, uh, coming from a lecturer, which I mean they really value such kind of recommendation. Request your recommendation letter as early as possible and provide your recommender with adequate time to complete before submission deadline. So, which means you need to be you need to be on their toe. You need to be reminding them every time to be able to submit the um, recommendation letter on time before the admission deadline. Because if they submit it after the admission deadline your application may run into some sort of problem because of this issue, it might not be accepted. Please note that recommendation letter should be received to our system by the document submission due date. So now, uh, only, for G, uh, only for graduate program, who we'll apply for PhD program to the same academic ad advisor, the recommendation letter can be replaced with confirmation certificate for PhD applicants. So you can download the document in this place. Now, an English proficiency test score report is also required. So now this is the beauty of it. So uh, TOEFL, um, um, IELTS of 6.5, uh, um, I mean, these are, uh, these are the recognized English um, uh, language that they accept. Test must be taken within two years before the deadline date. Or only original copies will be accepted. For IELTS only, photocopies will be accepted. Our institution code for ETS is 0144. So that is if you are taking ETS uh, um, uh, test uh, proficiency. Conditional admission now for MSc and PhD program. This is the beauty of it. They, give, they understand that some people might not have, I mean, within this uh, um, uh, TOEFL, IETS, and like. So they accept that they will provide you a conditional admission when you are able to provide what is called English proficiency certificate from your school, stating that English was the mode of instructions from your school. Here it is. Now, any student admitted to the institute with conditional admission who does not have an English, English score report at the point of application period within six months from the date of admission must at least take the English test results that meet the application criteria of the institute, meaning if you get an English proficiency certificate for MSc and for PhD, if you get this certificate from your school to get a waiver, it is a conditional or a temporary waiver. You have at least six months to write the recognized English proficiency uh, required certification. So either TOEFL, IELTS, or ETS, any of the recognized English proficiency um, uh, certificate recognized by the institute, you have at least six months after you have been enrolled in the school to be able to provide it. If you don't provide this at the seventh month, they will deregister your application or they will uh, 
here it is, conditional admitted to student, but fail if you fail to submit the required document at the seven months, you will automatically be removed from the school registered uh, admission. Okay, so which means you have within six months after you have been enrolled and you get to the school to provide this um, uh, uh, recognized admission, uh, sorry, this recognized English proficiency test call for the school. Now, a copy of the applicant's international passport is also required. Now, if you need to, if you want to now apply for matriculation fee waiver, just download this document here and fill it with the required, a letter of recommendation for matriculation fee waiver must be issued by the chair of your last home university or department on the prescribed form. So which means the coordinator, so if you can get your coordinator, especially for 400 level or 300 level to write a recommendation letter for you to get a waiver for paying the matriculation fee, you, your document will be revealed together. So which means when you download any of this document, for the uh, matriculation fee waiver, you also need to provide a recommendation letter from your program coordinator or your, uh, for, for instance, uh, uh, your level coordinator, be it 400 level coordinator, uh, 300 level coordinator, uh, uh, 200 or 100 level coordinator, any one of them that you have a good rapport with, you can get a recommendation letter from them to recommend you for the matriculation fee Waiver. But of course, if you can afford it, you can go ahead and, of course, pay the uh, uh, matriculation fee waiver, which is equivalent to enrollment fee. Now, certificate of English proficiency, and we've, we've talked about that conditional admission requires that applicant to submit documentation related to English proficiency issued by the president or the dean of the last school attended. The documentation of English language proficiency must indicate that the medium of instruction was English. So that is why if you go to your exams and record department, let them issue you English proficiency certificate. That will show that you are taught in English. So that is that. Now, application process. Create your online application process. Step two, uh, uh, fill in the online application. Uh, make sure you keep a record of the application number, which is automatically created when you sign up request your recommender to submit a recommendation letter within the deadline, they upload the required document on the application system and click submission button before the deadline to complete the application. After, submit, after submission, check your email at least once daily to find out if there are any requests for an interview or additional document from the Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology. Check your final admission result at the online application system on the announcement date. Completion, complete your enrollment, completion, completion of, a, of your enrollment requires the reception of your document by the institute deadline. That is that for the graduate studentship. And this is the mandatory document that is required for graduate admission. Application form online, uh, one recommendation letter. <clears throat> you can, you know, you can, you know, get the recommendation letter here. High school profile, high school university transcript. High school diploma, which is your uh, certificate, English proficiency test score report, which, I mean, in this case, if you don't have IHS and the likes, you can get your English proficiency certificate from your school, standardized official test score report, passport, passport copy of applicant and both parents. So, which means for uh, graduate pro for graduate program, you need to submit passport copy, international passport copy of your um, of, of the applicant and the parent. So you also need to get the international passport data page of your parent as well. Official document of parent-child relationship. You know, a letter showing that, um, uh, uh, it, I mean, uh, usually the birth certificates usually show the name of the father, the name of the mother. So you can, you know, have your birth certificate. You can upload your birth certificate to show the parent-child relationship, and I will, I will suggest that you can, you know, get your birth certificate notarized by any court close to you, a, a high court or, or any court close to you. Statement of financial resources. Don't forget that you'll be offered admission for at least uh, an equivalent of about uh, 1.5 million or uh, 1,000 euro in your account. Will I mean, we do? I mean, just to show some sort of uh, financial uh, proficiency as an alternative measure show that you have some sort of financial backing. So 1.5 to 2M 
will be more than sufficient in your account to uh to get this document i mean to i mean this is the required or mandatory document that you will need uh to be able to get admission and also to apply for visa okay so and then let me quickly show to you this uh the application deadline for um uh, uh the i mean i think i've talked about it april 15 is the application deadline they get to you within 15 days they review your document within 30 days they get to you by uh june 4th which is tuesday of 2024 by june 25th they show they let you know whether you have been offered a place and you know i expect you to accept the uh, offer and they also have you know further information which i think we have already dealt extensively about so and so this is the application procedure. So if you have not uh, uh, registered, you need to register here. If you already, uh, if you have already registered, you are, you are, you can log in here. And there's something called application guide. So if you want, if you need a guide, a step by step guide from the school or the institute, they also have application guide such that if, they, if you have any questions, any 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 issues during your application, you need some clarification. They will guide you. So if if you are just seeing this channel for the first time like and subscribe to this channel so that by the time we drop opportunities and information like this you will be the first person to get notification also follow us on all our social media platform don't forget share this video to your loved ones it will really really help a whole lot of people this information is not something that you can hold share it with everybody that you know share it with your network on instagram or on every group that you belong this information we help somebody and somebody will definitely come and say, oh, share so, -so, 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 -so information with me. And I mean, I'm able to uh, uh, get the admission and I really thank you for sharing it with me. Somebody will thank you for sharing this information with them. So, and that is that's about the application procedure for the graduate school entrance. So now let me quickly say this. Um, uh, if at one point or the other, you feel that uh, you need some sort of clarification, the school have what is called a briefing session for graduate admission for 2024 fall semester. If you feel that uh, you will be chance just to be able to get some clarification, ask some questions, understand more about the school and the process and everything, you can apply through this link. And then they have, I mean, they have different timeline. They have for March 14, March 21st, March 28th, March, April 4th, and April 11th. So depending on which timeline is okay for you to be able to attend a briefing session for graduate program, both for MSc and for PhD. You can register for any of the timeline that you feel you'll be available to, you know, to get some questions and clarifications from the school directly. So uh, that's that about that. So this is an opportunity that you do not want to, you do not want to uh, carry over. You do not, I mean, you, I, I see no reason why you should miss this opportunity because tuition fee, everything that you need to survive in the school has been provided. So even the 1.5 to 2M that they say you should put in your account, I, I to me, it's just it's more or less like a, a dummy sort of a, a finance because you will not need it for anything. They just need you to be able to show some sort of financial proficiency in your account as an alternative measure between before the school finally, I mean, within the first few weeks that when you get into the school, before the school finally recognize your studentship and start processing everything that you need. So the, the money is more or less like some sort of uh, backings that you will need within the first one week that you get into the school. So you have no excuse to be able to carry this opportunity over BSc, MSc, and PhD. This is a school that says come into our institution to get all your programs or any program that you are admitted in to, to, to study them for free they give you stipend, uh, student allowance. They give you stipend, student allowance, meal allowance, international allowance, settlement allowance, flight reimbursement. I mean, what excuse do you would you say you have? So even if you borrow some, so you, you borrow money to to fly down to the school, they say they will reimburse you so that you can pay back the person that you borrow it from. So what excuse would you say you have this year? Not to jack, but I usually encourage everybody on my. Telegram group, I told them, as I said, you must face your front this year. You must be able to achieve your JAPA plan. You, you, there is no excuse this year. This is why JAPA with their days, we are 
particularly committed to bringing opportunities like this your way and we will bring more and more of them your way so like and subscribe click the top the click the bell so that by the time we drop opportunity you will get you'll be the first person to get notification you cannot afford to disappoint yourself this year the sky is your starting point i'm sure if you have any clarifications if you have any question regarding what we talk you can pay for a consultation you can register for our consultation fee so that we can you know sit down with you to review your document to review all the application procedure and every other necessary guideline and advice that you need to be able to lash into this opportunity you cannot afford to miss this please i beg you do not miss this opportunity it is very very essential it is very very important your 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 success is our own happiness thank you very very much don't forget to like and to subscribe Thank you once again and bye-bye for now.